24 years ago, you were a professor of Judaic studies in the University of Religious Studies department. Uh, how do you see your work in Judaic studies or religious studies as it's related to UFOs? Well, I often like to say that back in the 1960s, I was a teenage UFO investigator. And then later I became a professor of religious studies, specifically Judaic studies, with my specialty in religious traditions of heavenly ascent and otherworldly journeys. So I think at bottom, what moved my ufology and what moved my scholarship in the religious area was, a ve was, was something very similar. When I was a ufologist, I had a great interest in the first chapter of the book of Ezekiel, uh, which many of my friends understood as a UFO, and that was where I found myself going, like a, a compass needle toward north. So I think that all of my scholarship has been a way of dealing with those issues of the alien and the otherworldly that got me into UFOs in the first place. Are you still doing research on Judaic studies along with your novel writing? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. And we're moving a little bit away from Ezekiel and a little bit away from otherworldly journeys here. That it focuses, my, the, the, my interest now focuses on what happened when in the 17th century a Jewish man from Turkey named Shabbatai Tzvi, or some people pronounce it Sabbatai Zevi, claimed to be the Messiah, became an international celebrity, set the whole Jewish world on its ears, waiting for the redemption, and then converted to Islam. What happened after he converted? And I found myself exploring some fascinating figures. There was Abraham Miguel Cardozo, brought up in Spain as a Catholic, then converted to his family's ancestral Judaism, who at first thought that Shabbatai Tzvi was the Messiah, and then knew that he himself was the new and better Messiah, and who saw men in black come down from the moon to work their evil will on this earth, which is a theme that crops up, I think, independently centuries later in the UFOs. Right now I'm working on a translation of a book written around the year 1725, probably by one of the leading rabbis in Central Europe, if not the leading rabbi. And what this is, as I read it, is a charter of the world religion of the future, which is rooted in Kabbalistic Judaism, but unlike any religion previously known. Clearly this rabbi had not only a public life, but a hidden life. And through this book, I want to explore his hidden life. How do you define your interest uh, that unifies all your work together? I see myself as an explorer of the hidden, the alien, the unidentified within all of us. And what I hope to do is using all the tools I've got, which includes storytelling, which includes translation, to bring those hidden things to light so that we can see them and begin to understand what marvelous, mysterious creatures we all are. So I have to ask the 
the big question, do you believe in God? No and yes. Okay. No in that I cannot believe in the traditional God who rules the world, rewards the good, punishes the bad, protects the innocent. We all know that the innocent perish, sometimes horribly, without any protection. But yes, in two ways. One a very Freudian way and one a very Jungian way. The Freudian way is this, that we all, by virtue of having once been infants, have imprinted in us the image of some parental figure that rescues us when we cry, comforts us when we're pained. And I think we all have this image within us. We're not going to be able to root it out. So why not come to terms with it? Learn to make it into the best God we can have and worship it. That's the Freudian sense. The Jungian sense is somewhat deeper. That if Jung is right, and although I'm not a, I called myself a Jungian in an earlier interview, but I'm not totally sold on it, but I think he's on the right track. There's something within us that's bigger than ourselves, at least as big as our species. And who knows? perhaps even beyond our species. And in those far borders of our unconscious selves, perhaps there is a higher power that we can call God. So no, do I believe in God? No, but yes. Well, that's terrific. Thanks for uh, uh, your your moments of insight and ideas. And how can people find out more about what you're writing and what you're working on? Okay, well, I blog on UFOs, religion, and other subjects dear to my heart at www.davidhalperin.net. And I'm always very glad. I, I post about once a week, and I'm always very glad to hear responses to what I put up, and I also post about five times a week on my Facebook fan page, www.facebook.com slash Journal of a UFO Investigator. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Martin.